This video focuses on subnetting and how to find your subnetworks easily and quickly using the magic number trick. Let's say we're subnetting a 192.168.1.0 network slash 24. I have the IP address and subnet mask in decimal here and I have them listed in binary here. The network portion of the subnet mask and the host portion of the subnet mask. To subnet this network, what I can do is, is I can borrow one bit from the host portion of the subnet mask. And now I have one subnet bit. This changes the subnet mask from slash 24 to slash 25. If I borrow one bit from the host portion, I have one bit or two to the first power makes two possible subnetworks. The subnetworks I've created are the 192.168.1.0 subnet and the 192.168.1.128 subnet, both slash 25. The hosts on each network are 126 usable hosts. We have seven zeros here, and 2 to the 7th power is 128, minus 2 makes 126 usable hosts per subnet. If I decide to borrow two subnetwork bits, from the host portion of the original 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. I now have slash 26. I've borrowed two bits. So now I have two to the second power of subnet bits. So I have effectively four subnetworks. The four subnetworks are listed here. For host bits, I have six zeros in the host portion of the address and 2 to the 6th power is 64. Minus 2 for each subnet makes 62 usable hosts per subnet. The subnetworks that are created are the 192.168.1.0 subnet, the 64 subnet, the 128 subnet, and the 192 subnet. Notice how the number of borrowed bits and the number of host bits determines a lot about the subnet. If I borrow three subnetwork bits, I now have a slash 27, so it goes from slash 24 to slash 27. I have three subnet bits. Two to the third power is eight. Two times two times two is eight. And you can see that I now have eight subnets or eight subnetworks created from the original 192.168.1.0 network. Each subnet is now slash 27. Notice that there are now 32 hosts or 30 usable hosts per subnetwork. We could go up to slash 28 and now I have four subnetwork bits. Notice that the subnet mask has changed from 255.255.255.0 when it was slash 24 to now 240. I now have 16 subnetworks or 2 to the fourth power and there's 2 to the fourth power of hosts per network, so there's 16 or 14 usable host addresses per subnet. Borrowing 5 bits looks like this, and borrowing 6 bits looks like this. I've now borrowed 6 bits from the original 8-bit host portion of the original slash 24 network, and I now have 2 to the 6th power of possible subnetworks, meaning I have 64 subnets. The host portion of the address is now only 2 bits, or 2 to the second power, meaning there's only 4 host addresses per subnet. Now if you have 4 host addresses, you have to leave room for the network address and the broadcast address, so 4 minus 2 leaves only 2 usable hosts per subnet. Typically, on a LAN, we do not go higher than a slash 30 subnet mask. Otherwise, you'll not have enough room for usable host addresses. In other words, we can't borrow any more bits from the host portion, or we won't have enough addresses for hosts. You might be asking yourself how I was able to discern the different subnetworks from the subnet mask or subnet bits that were borrowed. There are many different ways to derive the subnetworks from the subnet mask, but my favorite is the magic number technique.
The magic number is simply the place value of the last one in the subnet mask. So in this situation, we have a slash 25 subnet mask. We have 25 ones, and the last one is the one here all the way on the right, highlighted in red. This one, if we look at it according to this octet, is in the 128th place. If we think about the place values of 8 bits, this is the 128th place. So the magic number in this situation is 128. The magic number tells us where to find the networks. It tells us that the networks will go up by 128. So in this case, the first network, which is always 0, so 192.168.1.0 slash 25, and from there, the networks go up by 128, so the next network is 192.168.1.128. Let's see how this works, borrowing two bits from the host portion. Now I have borrowed two bits from the host portion of the subnet mask. The magic number is now the last binary one, which in this case is in the 64's place. So the magic number is 64. The magic number tells us how to find our networks and lets us know that the networks will be going up in increments of 64. So for instance, the first subnet is always 0, so 192.168.1.0 slash 26. The next subnet is 64. 64 plus 64 is 128, and 128 plus 64 is 192 you can see how the subnets are going up by 64. There's only four subnets because we've borrowed two subnet bits. Also, we can go no higher than 192 because 64 plus 192 is 256, and that's too large a number. Let's see how it works with three bits. With three bits, we now have a slash 25, 26, 27 subnet mask, slash 27 subnet mask, in decimal 255255255224. The last one in the subnet mask is our magic number. In this case, it's in the 32's place in the binary conversion table. So the magic number is 32. If we look at the networks, we'll see that they go up by 32. The first network being 0, 192.168.1.0 slash 27, then the 32 subnet slash 27, 64, 96, 128, 160, 192, and 224. The subnets go up in increments of 32, following the magic number. Now that we see the pattern and how the last borrowed bit affects the location of the subnetworks, let's try it with a slash 28 subnet mask. Now I have the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network. I want to subnet it, changing it to slash 28. Slash 28 means I borrow four bits in the subnet mask. So I now have 28 ones counted from left to right. 255.255.255.240 subnet mask. 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 is 240. The last one is in the 16's place. This is the 128's place, the 64's place, the 32's place, the 16's place. So the magic number is 16. We'll see that the networks go up by 16. The first network is always 0, so 192.168.1.0 slash 28. I'll copy this and paste it, and the next network will be the 16 network. Why? Because the magic number is 16, because the last one is in the place value of 16. The next network will be 32, and the following network will be 48, and after 48, 64 and so on and so forth. The networks will go up by 16. In each network, we have the host bits, four bits for hosts, 
which is also 2 to the fourth power of 16. So the network will go from 0 up to 15, with 0 being the sub-network address, or network address, and 15 being the broadcast address, and the next subnet is the 16 sub-network. Now let's try creating slash 29 subnets. We can see that that involves borrowing 5 bits from the host portion of the subnet mask, and that the last one is in the eighths place. So the magic number is 8. The networks will go up in increments of 8. So starting from 0, we'll have the 8 network and the 16 network and the 24 network and so on and so forth, all subnets being slash 29. For the slash 30, we see that the last one is in the 4's place and that the networks will go up by 4. So similarly, the networks will go up in increments of 4. So the first network is the 0 network, then the 4 subnetwork, then the 8 subnetwork, each subnetwork will have four host addresses, in this case 0 to 3. 0 will be the network address, 3 the broadcast address, and the addresses between 1 and 2 will be the usable host addresses. Only two usable host addresses in a slash 30 subnetted network. You might ask yourself, will this technique, the magic number technique of looking at the place value of the last one in the subnet mask, work in other subnetted octets. In other words, if we're starting from a class B slash 16 network address or a slash 8 class A network address, would this technique work? And it does. For instance, if we take a 172.16.0.0 network slash 16, you can see in this scenario I've subnetted it to a slash 23 subnet mask. In other words, I've taken the original 16 network bits and borrowed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 ones from the host portion of the subnet mask. In this situation, the last borrowed one is in the 2's place, so the magic number in this situation is 2. This means that the subnets will go up by 2 in this octet here. So in other words, our first subnet will be 172.16.0.0 slash 23 and the next network will be 172.16.2.0 slash 23. The only difference is now instead of 16 host bits like we would have had in a slash 16 network, we now have nine host bits, so two to the ninth power, meaning we have 512 minus two would be 510 host addresses that we can assign. In other words, the network goes from 0, 0.0 all the way up to 172.16.1 so the first usable host address would be 0 0.1 and the last usable host address would be 1.254. The next subnet starts at 2.0. After that, the networks continue to go up by 2. In other words, the next subnet will be the 4 subnet and then the 6 subnet and the 8 subnet. Notice that the networks are going up by 2, but in the third octet, not in the fourth octet. The only difference not to be confused on is the larger number of host addresses that you'll experience when you subnet in this octet or in the second octet. You can see how the magic number technique can help you quickly locate the networks or subnets 